zoax.net. Lesson 4. Variables. For this lesson, you will need a project like the one we created in Lesson 1. We can think of a variable in Java as a container that holds a particular type of item, like an integer value. As the name variable implies, we can change the contents of a variable at any time. However, we cannot change the type of data that a variable holds. For example, when we create an int variable, we cannot put a double style floating point number into it. Also, we cannot change the type of the data that it holds to allow it to store doubles. If we want to store a double, we need to create a new variable to hold it. We can only change the value of the integer that it holds to anything in the range that was specified in our primitive types table. For the int type, that is any integer value in this range. For our first program, we will demonstrate variables with a simple example. In this first line of code that we added, we have a variable declaration. The declaration consists of a type and a variable name. As always, we need to put a semicolon to indicate the end of the line. For the type, variables can be of any of the primitive types that we have described before. They can even be more complex types, but we will wait to cover those later. The variable name can be anything that we like. However, there are some restrictions which we have outlined on our variables reference page. For most purposes, we will simply use uppercase and lowercase letters which will not cause any problems. You may have noticed that my variable name looks a little strange. I begin the name with the small letter i to indicate that this variable is an int type variable. This is called Hungarian notation. It takes a little time to get used to it and it isn't strictly necessary, but it is good coding practice. It will help to make your code more readable and it has the added benefit of preventing name clashes. You can consult our reference page for more information. After the declaration, we assign the variable a value. Even though the compiler is supposed to assign a default value, it will complain if you do not explicitly initialize the variable with a value. Finally, we output the value so that we can see it. Executing the program, we see this. It is not necessary to separate the declaration and the initialization. We can put it all together in one line, like this, as we did in our last lesson. Then we can compile and execute the program, and we will see the same thing as before. For our second program, we demonstrate that we can vary the value of a variable. For this program, we begin with the char type variable and initialize it with the character value of x. Then we output the character value and assign it a new value three more times. For the last output, we use a print line command to add an end line at the end. Executing the program, we see the word Zoax printed in the output pane like this. We will finish with one last short program. In this one, we demonstrate the syntax for declaring multiple variables in one line. In this first line, we declare three double variables, dx, dy, and dz. In the next line, we assign each of them the value 3.14159, which is an approximation for pi. The syntax is odd and I seldom use it in programming, but I included it here for completeness. After that, we output the value of each of the variables to show that the assignment happened as expected. Executing the program, we see this in the output pane.